Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or even good night. My name is Raphael. You're with me on my third Cairo vlog, and we are at the Saint Simon the Shoemaker's Monastery in the mountains of Ma'atta. I hope you enjoy. During our trip to the Hanging Church, the Uber driver that took us there recommended that we visit Saint Simon's Monastery. Funnily enough, the story of Saint Simon starts at the Hanging Church. During the 10th century, whilst Pope Abraham, the 62nd Pope of Alexandria, was seated. The Hanging Church was converted into a mosque in the 9th century by Ali ibn Yahya, who had a successful string of military campaigns against the Roman Empire. Al Mus then became the ruler of Egypt under the Fatimid Empire, taking control of the mosque after setting up the city of Cairo, or Al Qahira. To find out how Pope Abraham of Alexandria turned the mosque back into a church, we will have to visit the monastery of Saint Simon the Shoemaker. So me and mum hopped into another Uber, this time for just two pounds to take us up all the way into the mountains. The journey up there isn't an easy one and it's not for the faint of heart. To get there you have to pass through a place called Zabalin, which is translated as garbage land. This is actually one of the biggest and most efficient recycling centres in the world, where they beat both Manila and Mumbai at the Rio Recycling Summit due to the fact that they successfully recycle 80% of all rubbish collected. But what you see next is definitely worth going through all of that for because in the 1970s, Pope Shenouda commissioned the building of the largest church in the Middle East to commemorate the story of Saint Simon and Pope Abraham. The legend of what happened is fervently debated as no corroborating historical record exists. But the Coptic Church's version of events is that Pope Abraham was called by Caliph al-Mutz to answer some questions on theology along with a Jewish rabbi. After a heated discussion and reference to Matthew 17:20, which reads, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Caliph al-Mutz demanded that Pope Abraham move the mountain from Macadinia to make room for the new city of Cairo, or else he and all the Coptic Christians in the area would be killed. Pope Abraham then put together a group of monks, priests and elders. He told them to pray for three days for a penance, and on the morning of the third day, Abraham was praying when he saw the Virgin Mary appear to him, and she told him to go to the great market and that he would find a one-eyed man carrying on his shoulder a jar full of water. Take him, as it will be by his hands that this miracle will be performed, she said. This man was Simon the Tanner. Simon had plucked out his eye because of a passage from the Bible that said, if your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away, for it is better for you to lose one part of your body than to lose your whole body. So Simon told Abraham to go out with his priests and all the people to the mountain with the Caliph and his soldiers. Simon then told Abraham to cry out, O Lord have mercy three times and each time make the sign of the cross over the mountain. The patriarch followed the words of Simon 
and the mountain was lifted high enough so that the sun could be seen from underneath it. So I'm here at the church at St. Simon's Monastery, the biggest sort of church in the Middle East. Now, the story behind how this cave was created dates back to the 10th century when St. Simon the Shoemaker moved this mountain to its current location and uh, a, the church was established here in the 1970s and finished. There are also two other churches underneath this large amphitheatre church, one that is more recent than it and another one that dates back to the 10th century when the alleged story took place. The mountain itself was renamed Gabal Mokottam, or Broken Off Mountain, after the 10th century. And despite there being geological irregularities in the area that give credence to the legend, academics have argued that the name is most likely due to tectonic activity, as well as the area's history as a limestone and alabaster quarry used by the ancient Egyptians. However, the last chapter of the Coptic Church's story is also very interesting as it claims a Fatimid Caliph converted to Christianity after seeing the mountain move. And he did this in the oldest, most complete Roman church in Egypt. Built in the fourth century with the same brickwork that we saw previously at the Roman Babylonian tower, the church of St. Macarius has a large baptismal font that was rumored to have been used to baptize the Caliph after he saw the mountain move. The story then goes on to say that he abdicated the throne and allowed his son Al-Aziz to take his place. Before abdicating the throne, however, the Caliph gave permission to Pope Abraham to renovate the hanging church and make it become a church once again. And that concludes my third Cairo vlog on St. Simon's Monastery. I hope you enjoyed. Please feel free to leave a comment.